order. Uh, we have two items in the agenda. So we will start with federal and regional legislative affairs agenda. So, Mr. Levy, you are on. Thank you, Madam Council President and Council Members. Um, good evening. I'm Doug Levy. I'm here in front of you as your um, regional, state, federal affairs and special projects consultant and had been asked to um, give the committee of the whole a presentation on um, some of the key issues that we're dealing with regionally and federally. Uh, of course, we'd already had a complete briefing for the council on the state legislative agenda and the legislature's underway and you were all down there in full force on Friday doing a great job. So um, I think we had a bit of a snafu in that um, you do have a copy of our regional federal affairs agenda loaded, but you may not have electronically uh, a copy of the PowerPoint that was, I believe, sent around. So um, I apologize for that, but I'll work off of this and then we'll make sure we get it sent to all of you um, in the morning. So uh, again, my apologies on that. Um, so first, starting with um, some of our activities in the region and some of the things that will be um, front and center for us. Um, one uh, clearly is going to be um, King County Metro and um, proposed changes within King County Metro for countywide transit service over the course of the year. Um, first of all, there's been a uh, Metro Connects Mobility Framework set of, of guidelines um, that's been transmitted to the King County Council um, and the Regional Transit Committee within the Council of which Council Member McCurvin is a member is going to be voting on that and that'll feed into service guidelines for transit um, likely in the summer 2020 timeframe. Um, there's also the issue of rapid ride service. Remember, that's the, the frequent four times an hour service, um, which King County has established um, around the county. And the, uh, it's been given designated alphabetical names. The F line is already up and operating in Renton. And one of the next lines to go live in 2023 is the rapid ride I line that will connect Renton, Kent, and Auburn. Um, so we'll see that for 2023 implementation. Additionally, we worked with King County Metro on an access to transit study, looking at six geographic areas in Renton and working with council member up the Grove on that. Um, we have the Cascade Benson Hill area as the site of a community connections pilot um, for alternative ways of giving people transit service. Um, there's been several routes um, added for service um, in the Renton area um, in 2019. Um, so those are all good things. I think the one red flag is that in the passage of Initiative 976 by the voters, depending on how the legal challenges play out with that, um, as we shared with you at Council last year on an Initiative 976 briefing, that's potentially a six-year loss of about $119 million for Metro, um, again, pending the, the legal decisions that are made on the initiative. Um, the other thing that we need to watch for this year on the Metro side is that with Initiative 976 ramifications and with the fact that the City of Seattle's um, Transportation Benefit District, their six-year district is up for renewal this year, it's very possible that we will see some type of a countywide ballot on transit service going forward. And so obviously that's something we need to be very actively engaged in. Um, and I mentioned um, Council Member McCurvin's name earlier. I think the key players for us to think about, uh, all of you obviously, but um, County Council Member Dave Updegrove chairs the Regional Transit Committee that's going to be looking at Metro Connects and what's called the Mobility Framework. And then Council Member McCurvin um, has a seat on that body, which is a good thing for all of you. Um, then moving on to the other key transit issue in the region, and that's sound transit. Um, 
first of all, for the first time in over a quarter of a century, um, Renton is going to have someone sitting directly on the Sound Transit Board um, with the appointment of Council Member Prince. Um, so um, you'll have a voice directly on that board instead of attempting to pipe into it. Um, the other major thing that we'll be working on that is coming sooner than we think, 2024, is the service delivery for bus rapid transit up and down the Interstate 405 corridor. Um, so there are several issues associated with bus rapid transit. One of them is the South Renton Transit Center at Rainier and Grady um, and a few issues there. We've um, tried to be very vocal in carrying out direction from the council that um, the design of that facility needs to incorporate future light rail transit. And we've also been bringing up the, the fact that along with the, the transit facility itself, um, which takes up about five acres of the old Sound Ford property, um, there's really a 14-acre site that should be looked at for potential transit-oriented development because we've got the Sound Ford site and immediately adjacent to it is the um, State Department of Transportation-owned park-and-ride facility that is currently leased to King County Metro. Um, additionally, um, we want to make sure that the light rail study for Renton um, and Renton to Burien that was in Sound Transit 3 moves forward. Um, we also will be working with Sound Transit and Vulcan on hopefully ensuring some type of structured parking solution at 405 and 44th uh, adjacent to where the BRT station will be built. And lastly, um, we had gotten a partial grant for um, the 7th Street connections into the Rainier and Grady facility under what's called the um, access grants under Sound Transit. Um, we would like to see uh, more funding for that project. It was a $2 million grant request. Um, we received $1 million and we're going to try and go back and get additional dollars for all of that access work, which also includes um, signal improvements on Rainier Avenue. Um, Another thing within our regional work that's been a, a, um, something where we've been very active and very busy is on affordable housing and homelessness. Um, so first of all, we've, we've been um, in frequent discussions with the county on leveraging city and Renton Housing Authority funding with King County's funding through um, buckets such as the Veteran Seniors Human Services Levy. Um, also, as you all well know, um, we are one of the cities and governing bodies that has helped form the South King Housing and Homelessness Partnership um, as a sub-regional effort to focus on housing and homelessness needs. Um, additionally, as you are well aware, there's been a lot of publicity around Microsoft's commitment to affordable housing and homelessness prevention, and Microsoft has taken a significant interest in the Renton community. They've toured the Sunset area with us. Um, they will be back in the next several weeks um, to sit down with the mayor. And so we are very hopeful of partnering, uh, hopefully on specific projects with Microsoft. Um, we've also um, been in conversation with um, former Governor Gregoire, who is heading up the Challenge Seattle effort to target uh, what we call the missing middle for affordable housing uh, home and home ownership. Um, and lastly, um, as you well know and as you um, shared with our legislators, we hope to work within the region with the county and with our friends at the state legislature on funding needs for relocating the homeless feeding program and the severe cold weather shelter that are currently at the 300 building at the edge of the Renton Airport, but which we need to relocate um, because that 300 building is um, uh, not considered compliant with the FAA's um, jurisdiction and the airport mission. Um, the other thing I'd like to call to your attention in our work on, around the region is um, the whole arena of parks and trails and youth services and open space. Um, we uh, put considerable work into um, affecting the outcome of the King County Parks levy um, last year. As you'll recall, the the voters in King County took about a, an overall 70% favorable vote toward a six-year 
extension and expansion of the King County Parks levy. And that includes um, a slight increase in per capita funding for Renton and other cities around the county. Um, it includes $4 million for the Sioux Creek Trail to be extended. Um, there's also possible additional dollars in the levy um, that if, for example, the, the Lake to Sound Trail project is not completed over the six-year period, um, unspent dollars could go to the Sioux Creek project. Um, and we also had some language in the East Rail Corridor um, part of the levy, um, basically indicating that um, if all of that money that had been targeted for specific projects is not spent, then unspent dollars should go to the Renton portion of East Rail. Um, flood control and the flood control district um, in the county is another major regional issue for us. Um, this year, um, council member up the Grove takes over as chair of the flood control district. Um, that's after several years of chairmanship by council member Reagan Dunn, and he will remain the vice chair of that. Um, so we have a number of projects that are critical for Renton within the flood district that we've been fortunate to receive funding for. Um, they include Renton levy certification, a lower Cedar River flood reduction study, um, ongoing dredging work on the Lower Cedar and the Black River Pump Station. Um, so over the years, the flood district has been up and operating. I would say Kent and Renton and sev several South County jurisdictions have fared very well. There does tend to be some tension because of that with Seattle and some of the cities on the east side. Um, the other thing that we've worked on, and I think the, the council hit on this um, just a week or so ago when you went over all of those regional bodies and where um, members of the council are going to participate, um, there's, a, there's a lot of these regional groups that we need to pay attention to. For example, one of them is the Puget Sound Regional Council, which um, plays a very large role in federal funding distribution. So um, the mayor has a a direct seat on the executive board. Um, I believe you've just designated Council Member Prince as his alternate. Um, there's four culture, there's the solid waste plan update, and there's an ongoing conversation with um, the King County Prosecutor's Office about filing standards. Um, I want to, I think, just congratulate you all. I think um, with this mayor and council, um, from my perspective, Renton is better positioned than it's ever been before with seats on some of these boards. Um, and that's a very good thing for the community as you continue to grow. Um, we've also talked about how we can, at a staff level, do a better job um, helping you keep abreast of all these boards, strategizing about the best way for you to do your job in representing the city. Um, and I think the Chief of Staff has had the idea of a possible um, regional state federal affairs team um, and we're going to continue to work on organizing something around that. Um, and then briefly I want to talk to you about the federal level um, uh, where we have several things we're working on. One is the Renton Airport where um, uh, we just applied recently for a pre-disaster mitigation grant to FEMA for seismic work on the air traffic control tower. Um, we're active in some pending federal legislation to better enable those employees who um, work at air, uh, by contract air traffic control towers, of which Renton Airport is one, um, to stay and um, allow, for example, retired air traffic control um, personnel to keep their social security annuity and be able to go back to work. Um, we've also been working with our congressional delegation to help ensure FAA funding for taxiway A and other infrastructure upgrades at the airport. And we've been trying to keep the delegation informed of the pending master plan uh, update for the airport. Um, We've also got on our list for the federal agenda um, transportation and the reauthorization of the Transportation Act and infrastructure. Um, and that's um, the type of issue we can go back and talk about at the National League of Cities. Um, we were just made aware of the fact that 
at least in the House, there will be an, uh, uh, another infrastructure package that members of the democratically controlled House will roll out next week. Candidly, um, with the Democrats controlling one body, the Republicans controlling another, this being a very major election year, it's hard to imagine we're going to see major strides made on Transportation Act or infrastructure. Um, we also will be um, working to continue to support um, both Senator Cantwell and Congresswoman Del Bene, who are trying to significantly expand the low income housing tax credit program that's on our list. Um, and I think we've talked with the mayor and all of you at various times about how we can maybe do a better job with sustained and regular outreach with members of our congressional delegation, principally Congressman Smith and our, and our two U.S. Senators. Um, and um, I want to give a shout out to the council. I think you all have scheduled a very good council presence in March for the National League of Cities. So I think that'll be really good timing with a, a new mayor and a new council president to um, just try and cement new relationships with your members of Congress. Um, so with that, that's a quick overview of some of the things we've been working on at the regional and federal level. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Doc. Any questions from the council? Um, Madam President. Yeah, Mr. Prince. Um, Doug, I, um, as we're talking about transportation and transit, um, any talk about the potential of a countywide transit levy in 2020? Sure, I'm happy to, Councilmember Prince. I think there are several things driving that, as, as I shared. Um, one of them, frankly, is the city of Seattle, which in, in 2014 set up a six-year transportation benefit district, and that um, will expire this year, and, and Seattle has to make a decision whether to just renew that transportation benefit district for itself or team up with King County on something more countywide around transit. Um, frankly, for Renton, one of the things that happens if that's just Seattle that is problematic is Seattle and its transportation benefit district essentially buys a premium level of transit service. And that means that King County, by virtue of Seattle paying in for additional service, is obligated to provide it and it affects what King County Metro can do for the rest of the county. So um, Seattle and their TBD re-up is one of the big drivers of what happens countywide. The other, as I mentioned, is Initiative 976, um, particularly if it's upheld by the courts and even if it's not, um, you know, we've received briefings on the fact that um, for Metro to fully fund the Metro Connects proposal that they put out there, there's a real delta between available funding um, and the funding it would take to do what's in the Metro Connects plan. Thank you, Doug. Any more questions? I do have a question. So as you say, it, we now have a broader representation. We have a lot of council members that are representing us regionally. So um, during the retreat, we are going to have a broader discussion about how we uh, want to make sure that every council member knows what is happening during the regional boards, but at the same time that the, the, the goal is to achieve what we have in our agenda as being part of these regional boards. Um, and a strategic plan, in the past we have not done it that way. So do you have any ideas or have you seen in other cities how it works well to make sure that every single council member that is on every single regional board uh, works well together with your office to get where we want to be in every single one of these representations? Um, thanks, Madam Council President. Yeah, I think it's a good question and I think we can do better at that and with the, um, the coordination with the council and um, as I mentioned earlier, that's um, I think the idea that the Chief of Staff put forward around some kind of a team that can work to make sure that Every time a council member is attending one of these meetings, um, he or she knows what's on the agenda and what some of the key issues are and that they have background on those issues. Um, so that's one of the things we definitely foresee. And um, I think we always want to make ourselves available to the full council for regular updates and briefings as well. Okay. okay. 
Good. And the other thing, could you do, talk to us more about the Regional Homeless Authority? I can, and I apologize. I sort of uh, overlooked that. That's been a big part. That was a big part of 2019. So the Regional Homeless Authority is going to be designed around primarily um, uh, rapid response, um, shelter placement, and some of those things at the back end of the homelessness problem, not so much some of those root cause issues around mental and behavioral health and, and opioids and the like. But um, the, the regional authority is going to be funded, uh, at least at the outset, by King County and Seattle. Um, we in the, the non-Seattle um, uh, suburban cities through the Sound Cities Association will have three seats on that homeless authority. Um, those are still to be determined. Um, and uh, there's also going to be woven into the, the homeless authority the whole notion of sub-area planning. Um, that's something that, you know, all of you working with the Sound Cities Association, and I know Councilmember Prince spent more hours of his 2019 life than he'd care to admit on this. But so the, the whole notion of sub-area planning is, is woven in. Um, there are three seats for uh, Sound Cities Association to designate. Um, and there's also, I think, assurances that um, this is being developed more as an interlocal agreement and not as some new type or layer of government. Um, I don't know if I answered all your questions, but that's some of the framework um, as it gets started. Okay. Any, anybody has any um, questions about Madam this? Madam President, I just want to fill in a little bit of yeah. what uh, Doug said about the Regional Homelessness Authority, because I did spend most of my 2019 on it. Um, SCA has selected the three names of the people who are going to serve on the Homelessness, homelessness Authority. Um, it is Angela Burney from Redmond, uh, Nancy Backus from Auburn, and myself. Nancy and I primarily because we were the two members who from SEA on the board who worked on and, and negotiated with the county on what the authority would look like um, and Angela Bernie because she was on the RPC when they decided the homelessness authority. Um, it's going to meet quarterly um, and I think the first meeting is going to be in March. Thanks for the update. That's great news. Thank you Councilmember uh, Prince and now I have a question for you. Please. So. Um, so regionally, uh, how this, uh, the Sound Cities Association is going to uh, get back to the cities to know the priorities each one of the city to be represented in that I, table? I am glad that you asked that question. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting about that Friday. Um, <clears throat> um, initially, we're going to have a meeting that's convened in February, I believe, February, late February, early March, um, for cities to have, send representatives to talk about what their priorities are around crisis response to homelessness. Um, and then what we'll, what we'll end up doing is the way SCA is lined up, it's lined up between um, Snoqualmie Valley, um, North, uh, South Valley, and South. Um, and so they'll there will be two meetings after that, one for North and Snoqualmie Valley and one for South and South Valley, where members of the, the authority will meet with um, elected officials in those communities and talk about it. So it's going to be a constant, ongoing conversation with elected officials in the jurisdictions to find out uh, what the concerns are. This is like an open meeting or the, the, the elected officials are going to be invited? The, the elected officials are going to be invited. It's going to be in a meeting with elected officials. And I think at some point, I don't know if SCA will convene a meeting with community, but I know that we're really trying to talk to the elected officials in their member cities about what it's going to look like. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Prince. Anybody has more questions about the homelessness, regional homelessness authority? I do have a question about, um, I, I didn't wait for you guys, <laughs> you know, about funding. Uh, do you know any expectations that they, we, they will request any funding from the cities in the future? Or this has never been discussed? Or do you know? Or you know? Um, currently, right now, um, there's not any ask for funding from um, cities outside of Seattle and King County. I think the goal is, uh, once this thing gets off the ground, if cities want to join it through interlocal agreement, 
they're able to join through interlocal agreement, but there's not any expectation outside of that. The way I look at it, and the way that some of my colleagues look at it, the funds from the county are city funds. Those funds come from the cities anyway. So right now, I think that the county funds, the city funds, are what's gonna be used, and then if we choose to join it through interlocal agreement, there'll be an expectation, but as of right now, there's none. Thank you, Council Member Prince. I might add, Council President, that early on when the Homelessness Authority was being debated and the notion of who paid and who did what and who got what was, was out there, there was some discussion of, gee, if, uh, if suburban cities are gonna be asked to be part of this, um, there should be some assurances that whatever services are provided are you know, equitably provided back into their communities. But I think that was about as far as it went. And then as the discussion matured, um, I think Council Member Prince captured it very well. It was King County, which after all is, um, has their funding through residents of the entire county and then the city of Seattle. And at least at this point, there hasn't been an ask beyond that. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I'm a little concerned. I, I watched the whole meeting when the King County Council were voting and David the Grove vote no. He's part of the representation of Renton. And, um, and the concerns that he brought to the table were valid to, for me. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I, I, if we can have, uh, you know, later more information about this, it will be greatly appreciated. Happy Thank to. Thank you very much. Anybody has any questions about the federal agenda? They are, we're gonna have three council members in Washington, D.C., and the mayor is also joining us, and um, I'm very much looking forward for that. Um, especially everything that has to do with transportation is very, very important right now. We need funding, like urgent, and then we hope we can be very, very effective, okay? So thank you very much for your you. presentation, and we are gonna move on with emerging issues. Keeping up with the same topic of regional boards, uh, uh, this week, uh, Councilmember Prince had his first meeting finally on the Sound Transit Board. Yay! So, can you brief us a little bit about what, are, what is um, our it was, goal? It was, honestly, and, and they mentioned to me not to get used to it, it was a very short meeting. Um, I think we were maybe in there an hour. <clears throat> and a good chunk of that was uh, public comment, uh, which was interesting. Um, but the main thing that we did at the meeting on Thursday was uh, we renamed the University Street Station um, that's in coordination with the North Gate Link Extension opening to Union Street Symphony Station. Um, there was a Sound Transit did a poll asking folks what names they wanted, and there was like four or five names, and a plurality of the folks wanted um, Symphony Street Station because that station's right by Benaroya Hall. Um, once they, they did the survey, they didn't realize that there were some technical aspects of why they needed to keep the USS moniker for emergency services and, and whatnot. And so they added Union Street Symphony Station. Um, that really is the, um, the bulk of what we did in that meeting. Well, we're hoping in the future that uh, we're gonna have to discuss more things. I think we'll have much more to discuss. Yeah, much more to discuss. Uh, uh, these are exciting times, and as we heard uh, Doug talk about uh, our priorities in transportation, well, we're looking forward to, to see that light rail study very, very, very soon, yes. so we can start moving forward with the new transit center. And um, and as well as it, if uh, when you have a chance, you can also um, inform a little bit better how the funding of the uh, of the monies that go to sound, sound transit works, because it gets very confusing. Get the piles. Why we belong to the east side, we don't belong to the pile to the sound. South, south yes, side. I am. I am. I am still waiting. I've got my orientation in a couple of weeks. That is one of the first questions I'm asking. Thank you. Very I much. assume that it's because of 405, but I don't know. Well, thank you very much. Anybody has any other emerging issues that I want to discuss at this time? No? With that, we are sure? Nope. No? Nope. Don't we, we have? have oh, no. We're not going to have community services today. Thank you for reminding me. So we are going to reschedule for later next month. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.